out mount a balanced tire for that. Uh, the only tools you really gonna need for this is a tire mounter and a dismounter, a tire balancer, a wire brush, and a valve cord. First step, just to take the cap off and remove your valve cord and let the air out of the tire. in the groove that are raised at about two thirty seconds of an inch. Right there, right there, right there, right there. And as long as your tread is above that wear marker, then your tire is good to use and it's good to keep in service. After the air is drained out, we're going to go the tire and use the bead breaker here. Take the bead up the way. Once you get the first side done, rotate to the other side and do the same thing. Sometimes you have to do multiple passes on the same side. You've broken the bead off. You want to take the tire, set it on the tire, and mount it this mount, right? Right in the center. Use the foot pedal in here, you grab the tire, center on the machine, and take this part of the machine, bring it down. You want to make sure you get it right on the side of the rim there, so that both of the white wear pads are touching. Press this yellow button, which locks the machine in place. Take your tire spoon. Grab the inside of the tire, and bring it up and over. Once it's up and over, you can rotate the machine, and we'll pull the bead off the top. Wrap the beads and pull off the top. Bring it up, pull the bottom bead off the top. Pull the machine, pull the top bottom bead off. Once you've removed it, track the arm, put it back to the side. And while you have the tire off your rim, it's a very good idea to bring it to the bench. And make sure you check the bead very well for any cuts or nicks or tears in it, because anything that's in this area of the tire will affect how well it seals on the rim. As you do it, you want to look inside too and check for anything, such as this leaf, which should not be in there. You don't want too much water in there either because that will cause an issue when you go to balance it. You also want to check everything over, make sure there are no nails, no sticks, no screws, no tread, and make sure that everything looks like it's in fairly good shape. That right there would be a possible cause for concern for me if I was going to use this tire on a real vehicle, but this is just for demonstrating purposes. So, after you done with that, bring the tire back to the machine, and before you go to put the tire back on, you should always take a wire brush, clean your rim up, where it'll be in the seat. This will ensure a good seal on the tire and we'll make sure it doesn't leave any air. Take the tire, place it back on top of the rim, use some soapy water to lubricate the bead, which will help it slide on the rim a lot easier. This is extremely important for tires that haven't been mounted before because they're a little tougher to go on the rim. Bring your arm back down. Pull the tire up, making sure it's under the rim, right there. 
Now, as you rotate it, push down on the side, and the machine will grab the bead and pull it onto the rim. Like that. Now, you do the same thing with the top side. Make sure it's under the rim, under the machine. Keep pressure down on the tire so that it has extra room to slip over the rim. Just like that. Pull the arm away. And now it's time to seat the bead on the tire. Use the air shot without a valve core in. Place it on the rim. And you give it a shot of air from the bottom and the top. And once the tire starts to seat, it's very important to let the, make sure the rim doesn't let go from the holding. Or else you risk the run, you run the risk of blowing your tire out. Now, as you pump it up, you want to watch the gap of the rim. And once it seats, you'll hear a little, little pop there. Now, that top side is seated. The bottom side should have seated by now. And it's also very important to note that you don't want to put more than 30, 30 to 35 pounds of air in a truck tire when you're seating on the rim. And about 20 pounds of air on a car tire. That was the second pop. This tire should be fully seated now on the rim. I'm going to pop it up to 25 pounds. We have shock right here and pull off the inflator as I put in the valve core. Very nice to have a second hand while doing this. Makes it a little easier. Put the valve core back in, put the cap on. Now you're going to balance the tire. Bring the tire to the balancer. And basically, the way a balancer works is you spin the tire at ISP and it tells you exactly how many, how many ounces of weight you put on the outside of the rim to make it a balance. Take the tire, get it on the shaft, and then take the right size cone and put it on. Make sure it holds the rim straight and in the center of the balancer. Set the dimensions, you use these two pieces here, and you place them on the rim where your weights are going to go on the inside and outside. Hit the brake down there. Go measure the rim width and height so it'll know where to put the weights when you spin it. Next up, so close the cover and let the fire machine spin it. As it's done spinning, it's going to show you how much weight to put on the tire. These numbers here are extremely high because this is pretty much a junk tire and it will not be used on a car again. Next step is to find your weights if you want. In this case, we're going to have to use heavy weights because we don't have a 6 ounce weight. I'm just going to start with two 3 ounce weights and put them on. You take them. Put them up against the rim, where they're supposed to be positioned, which the tire machine does for you. And use the hammer. Hammer them into the rim, so they will seat where they're supposed to be. Now, you come around to the other side. The tire machine will center it for you. We're going to set the weight foot. Place the weight on. Use the hammer. Hammer it on the rim. So it hold. After this is done, you should always rebalance it again. Check for more weights because after you do some, it may, need, may require a couple more on there. Um, once that's done, your tire is ready to be put on the vehicle and torque down to spec.
that's uh, going to conclude what we're doing for today. And hope you guys all learned something that you can take home and possibly use someday for yourself.